And here we go. Tuesday, September. I don't have my watch on. Tuesday, September 17th. We got a few things to tackle this morning. Namely, that the Red Sox are not technically dead yet, but they are four games out of the last wild card spot with 12 games to go. That's all they have left. So they basically need to play with their hair on fire, just win out to give themselves a chance. Hey, crazier things have happened. Could happen. They do have the tiebreaker with the Tigers, even though the Tigers are two and a half games up on them. And the Tigers are, I think, the last team on the outside looking in. They're a half game back of the Twins. So, I mean, this is not undoable. I just I have no idea what the plan is the rest of the year for the Sox. I haven't known what the plan was all year. I think they got a little too gassed up at the All-Star break and had some injuries. But Trevor Story came back. They've had a bunch of call-ups. September call-ups could push them over the edge. I just, I don't know how the pitching's going to hold up in the playoffs. So, hey, let's see. 12 games to go in September. I guess I still have a chance to go to a game if I want to. Maybe if it's down the stretch. Uh, I had a really good time with my buddy Chris a couple years back, 2021. It was the last one-game playoff that the MLB held on purpose. Um, And it probably will maybe be the last one ever between the Sox and the Yankees at Fenway. We had tickets down the right field line, pretty close to the bullpen. Garrett Cole was visibly shaken, rattled, before he even started the game, and we knocked him out in the second inning. I think Bogarts hit a home run, deep center, and great game. People, it was standing room only the whole game. That's the kind of uh, environment that Fenway provides. I feel bad for other fans that don't have that... um, that much electric energy in a ballpark because you'll never know what that's like unless you've probably been to to my ballpark, Fenway. So we've got a chance. Again, not high hopes. It's kind of like the Pats. Like, let's be competitive. Let's be in the game. Uh, But with the Red Sox, I've said it before, like, can you just just end it? Just die. Just end the season. And we'll start again next year. We can just get restarted right now. Start building for the future for 2024-25 season. <clears throat> um, I guess just the 25 season. What am I saying? Sounds like football. So that's wild card. That's your AL East uh, Red Sox update there. Orioles. Um, how far back are they at the Yankees? Like three games? Yeah. <clears throat> so those two teams are going to be in and maybe the Red Sox, you know, maybe it's a third team from the East, but we're a couple teams out right now. So I don't know. Needed to do a baseball update. It had been a minute. And speaking of baseball, Mike Trout, who has missed, said, 370 games over the past four seasons. I was lucky enough to see him play in a few games when I lived out in Orange in Southern California. Cheap tickets, 12 bucks a ticket to go to the Angels when they had Trout and Otani. So I would just pick every Otani start because he pitched. And I would go watch Otani and Trout for $12. Best deal in the game. But Trout opened to uh, discussing a position change after he's missed all these games. And he's had, I think, um, knee, yeah, torn meniscus in his left knee. You know, he's had injuries. And I want to point out that Mickey Mantle played almost his entire career with, I want to say it was ACL, but I want to make sure I get this right because it could have been an MCL. Um, He, yeah, 1951, right, World Series, game two, he sustained a right ACL injury, which was never reconstructed or repaired. Played for the Yankees and got three MVPs and a triple crown in 56. So the dude played his whole career with an ACL injury. Now, we don't know what it was because they never repaired it. or I think all they did was diagnose that, yeah, your ACL is messed up. So was it a really bad bruise? I mean, Mantle could still run fast. Um, And I bring up Mantle because he's... um, Mike Trout gets compared to him often. But 
Mike Trout has missed a lot of games. I don't know how many games Mickey Mantle missed. Let's see how many games. I'm going to do some quick, quick searching here. Mm -mm -mm. Mickey Mantle. Due to injury. All right, so he sat out more than 400 games. So this is an eerie comparison then. These are virtually the same player. It's like Trout is Mantle reincarnated. Um, you know, and Mantle played the outfield like Trout. But I think, yeah, moving Trout to first base, that'd be good. DH? I don't think he's at DH yet, but he's getting there. And to extend the guy's career, I think, is smart. And, if you know, he's thinking he wants to keep playing. I think you got to move him. I mean, outfield, it's, it's uh, with knee injuries, that's too much. You're putting too much at risk all the time. You're already at risk running the bases and getting, you know, quick out of the box. So I think DH is in Trout's near future if he's going to continue to play and put up the numbers batting-wise that, that he's capable of and he has. Um, what else does it say here? He's played in 266 games since the start of 2021. Yeah, so, but he's open to it. Smart guy. Open to a move away from center. Go to first base. Be a DH. That's what I would do. And then I bring you to the latest, not the greatest, but the latest news from PSA. Um, doctored and inauthentic items, fraud prevention and investigation. They updated this on the 12th, September 12th. Let's go back to the point here. And so everybody's saying, oh, is this the end of card cleaning and altering and look, restoration? I don't think the majority of people out there are recutting cards and, you know, cleaning them and dunking them in solution to fix them up. I'm sure people are doing it, but, you know, we get the cards packed fresh. You hit them with the uh, microfiber cloth just to get any dust particles off of it, and that's the best you can do. Like, that's that's what you do. You, you just, like, if I was going to take this card and I was like, oh, man, there's, like, a smudge on there. It's like your computer screen, but you just lightly hit it with the microfiber and you put it in a penny sleeve. That's that's what you do. But clearly people are recutting the cards. They're refinishing, remastering. It sounds like the remix. <laughs> it's like cards are songs. They're doing a lot to doctor the items and then to send to PSA because, look, PSA gets so many orders and so many cards. They can't. There's no way you could figure out who's doing that. And I am sure it will continue to happen. And I'm sure cards will continue to get slabbed that were altered but look authentic and look pristine and gem 10 even. And so now there's a whole thing about you're liable. Um, you know, PSA has the right to reject your item. And they can, I guess, like take you to court and do all this stuff. So... You know, it's a little scary if you're reading that for the first time. But, you know, it's like no tampering. But on the other side, I would say this. What if I submit a card that I bought at a show that I didn't know was altered? See, I just don't think you can come down like that because if I'm submitting stuff not knowing or like what if somebody's bringing cards into me and I'm taking on the liability as a shop and saying, hey, I'm going to facilitate your card to go to PSA. I'm going to look at it, but I'm no expert either. I'm just going to say, well, you told me it's packed fresh, or they may not know. Like, in what point in the chain does someone know the card is altered? You know, I get that this is to prevent people from knowingly doing it, but... If I've got the card and I'm like the fifth person to possess this card and I finally send it in, why am I the one getting punished? Because if PSA doesn't want to have liability for having to <clears throat> recognize which cards are altered and, uh, you know, recut and miscut and whatever, tampered with, if they don't have to be liable, why do I? If I'm like, 
now you're putting more pressure on me because now I'm going to be a little more gun shy on sending stuff. Am I only going to send stuff straight out of a pack? So I get what they're doing. I understand that in the spirit of this, it's good. You don't want people to submit cards that are knowingly altered to get better grades because it's, it's scamming. It's, you're trying to get more money to say, I broke this out. I'm going to recut it or mess with the centering or the back or I don't know what, what you're going to do and resubmit it after cracking it out to try to get a 10 to try to make more money because we know the difference between a 9 and a 10 is a crazy valley with so much money even I mean the difference between an 8 and a 10 my point is this is all again more just them being totally subjective and if I'm submitting a card that has been altered but I don't know because again I'm not an expert uh, why am I going to take the punishment it's going to make me not want to submit cards for customers. And I think, PSA, don't you want more submissions? I think you do. That's how you make money. So we'll see how this um, this plays out. This was just updated. Um, you know, and also it's, it's very like a big blanket statement. Like they can change this at any time. It's classic legalese of them saying, you know, this is what we say today, but tomorrow it could change. And I mean... Come up with a policy and stick to it. Don't do not do this legal gray area thing. Like, be definitive. Um, you know, with AI and technology, you should, you should be able to come up with a way to detect this stuff. I'm not saying you have to figure it out today, but don't put it back on the customers who are spending good money and waiting a long time for these cards to come back. And just to make us scared of like, well, we, at our, in our discretion, can tell you if we're going to reject your card and like, sue you and ban you from using PSA. Well, that's not fair. Now, it's equally not fair for me to submit stuff, get it a 10, sell it on eBay to somebody that doesn't know, and then them to be unhappy because it shouldn't be a 10. <clears throat> you got to have quality control. You said that your service is to authenticate and grade cards. you got to get better at that. If there's people trying to pass a $100 bill in this shop, i got to know about it. I got to figure it out. That's on me. You got to take some responsibility, PSA, as a company. And I get that you're having a lot of submissions, but more money, more problems, right? When it rains, it pours. So don't put too much onus on the customers. I'm not saying we're always right, but we spend money with you, and then we wait and wait and wait just for you to say <clears throat> we can, in our sole discretion, reject any item submitted by you and not grade or authenticate. That's fine. You can you can reject it. That's fine, but you can't um, you can't be holding us liable for stuff. It's on you. It's a business. If you say it's not real, cool, reject it. I'm good with that. So read through that. It's on psa doc, psa card dot com terms and conditions, and you can see everything in there. I'm just scrolling through it now. Um. You authorize PSA to disclose your identifying information, records of your activities, personal info. I mean, <clears throat> it's your third party, <laughs> your information to third parties in order to conduct or aid in the investigation of suspected criminal activity or fraud. Examples of fraud include, but are not limited to, engaging in or supporting counterfeiting. Okay. Okay. If I'm unknowingly supporting that, <clears throat> I don't know that. Customers are submitting cards. So right there, do a little more work. It's a good blanket statement, but you haven't done all your homework yet, PSA. Do some more work there. Tampering, sheet cutting, card doctoring, mislabeling. We had actually an instance, it doesn't have to do with PS PSA, but on eBay, where we submitted a card, we uploaded a card, posted it, um, put it up for auction, Mickey Mantle, and it was a, we said it was a very good to um, excellent. Had we just said as pictured and been vague, we the card would have sold because it went for over 250 bucks. And, you know, they send all those to Florida, to SGC, to get authenticated. Or, so we thought it would just say authentic. But they started doing their own grading and said, no, this isn't excellent. They just said it's uh, like a, two three very good and we said whoa 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 this isn't in a slab you don't get to you don't get to be judge and jury on this how come suddenly you're getting to to say that 
So we learned our lesson. Now, either we send it to PSA to get, get graded. So then there's no questions. Yeah, it has, still has to go to Florida if it sells for over 250 bucks, Just to say, yep, this isn't a real slab. It's real. We can send it on to the customer. Or if it sells for over 250 and it's a raw card and it's not in a slab, um, we just leave the, the description way more vague. So they can't ding us on misleading or mislabeled. Like, and let's be real. I'm sorry, but my man, my GM knows more than a lot of people at your company, as you see. It's just how it goes. What do you want me to say? It's been in the game probably longer than your longest employee. So, yeah, I'm not buying what you're putting down. I'm not buying what you're selling. <clears throat> yeah, so with those raw cards, we just leave it as pictured. We'll say what the card is, like if it's a 69 Mickey Mantle with the number, but we'll say as pictured. We won't even say possibly this great or that great. We'll just say as pictured looks nice. <laughs> Keep it general. The world we live in, all these grading and scales and rubrics, but yeah, give that a read, psacard.com slash terms and conditions. We do grade car, uh, submit cards for grading here in the shop, 370 U.S. Route 1 in Scarborough, across from Land Rover, Southern Maine. We are, I believe right now, we are the biggest and the newest card shop in Maine in general. So, what's up? That's us. That's what we do. Uh, we've been, been here about eight months. And, yeah, just another day in the shop. Just had to talk about this PSA stuff. We've got some shows coming up October 12th at the Amvets in Yarmouth. $5 entry, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The main card show, Carter Collects Cards and his super friends. We are one of those super friends. We will be there all day. And then there's a trade night, 4.30 to 6.30 p.m., at the Amvets, so it's a full day thing for double play and Carter collects cards at the main card show. Don's will be there. Um, Ryan from Coliseum co-hosting, he'll be there. Lots of people are going to be there in the card world around here, so don't want to miss that. And then the following weekend at the Expo, October nineteenth and twentieth, nine a.m. to four p.m. Two full days. I think that's ten dollar entry, but it's at the Expo. A lot of tables. We're going to have two of them. A lot of vendors, a lot of sales, a lot of deals. If you've wanted to really do deals with us, come to that show because the discount's going to be way different than if you came in the shop to buy stuff. And that's, uh, yeah, coming up 19th and 20th, October. All right. Get on with my day here, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.